Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you're doing well wherever this little clip may find you. If it's your first time and you like what you hear at the end of this show, you know what to do. The standard YouTuber talk, I'm not going to give it to you because I get insulted in the comments about what things I say and the prompts that I give. So I'm not going to do it in a beggy DSP way. I'm just going to say, if you enjoy what you see and you hear, at the end, please respond via the means you know below and stuff but yeah hope you're good hope you're good now this is a random little clip and something i've been thinking about for a while and i want to be upfront and honest about it because it is coming it is coming from a personal space it's not something that i think these people actually worry about or care about because for the most part we don't know what's going on in their lives and who are we to them and who am i to them but still I thought I'd get this off my chest. Most of you would know me from my channel, not because of my podcast, because most of you guys don't listen or watch my podcast, right? I have many people here leaving comments saying, oh, all you do is talk about Brendan and Brian Gallen. It's like, no, mate, I've got over 2,000 video clips on here. Most of them are on podcast topics, but you guys don't care about those things, so they've got low views, right? So sometimes when I see the high views on these flipping comedy-related clips, what do I do? I recognize the numbers and I play to my audience. And when I play to my audience, I get slapped across the face. I can't win with some of you lot. I can't bloody win. But anyway, <laughs> that aside, the reason why I want to bring this up is I was thinking a little bit because this clip came up of Chris D'Elia on a recent episode of his show. Now, I'm happy that Chris D'Elia is kind of back in the forefront. I'm still a bit annoyed that he's not on stage. I'm still a bit annoyed that he's not using this really traumatic occasion that he went through where he got cancelled and he got accused of some very heinous things to basically inform his art and maybe evolve into a better and brighter comedian because for how funny Chris is on podcasts he suffers from the fear of one thing where I don't necessarily think his comedy or his kind of timing or how quick he is translates to the stage now I've heard people say in real life he's absolutely amazing and you'll make the room shake but from what I've seen on specials watching you know from my laptop screen it doesn't seem that impressive but whenever he's on a podcast he legitimately makes me laugh like there's not a lot of those guys from that LA comedy scene that do make me laugh but he's definitely one of them even with the you know like little kids going on in the background he still makes me laugh but yeah I stumbled upon this clip that made me remember why I was so annoyed and I took it so personally when all the cancellations happened and everyone was just throwing this guy under the bus because it reminded me why I for a long time in my life have refused to have any real close friends or a big social group now I know it might sound crazy to you guys and think oh my god Agostino you seem so funny you seem so personable and so blah 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 but really I don't really have any many friends it's quite clear to see look at the amount of time I spend online look at the amount of videos I've got on my YouTube channel look at the amount of social media profiles I have on every single platform this is not somebody that hangs around with loads of people IRL most of the reason why is because I had a very traumatic event happen when I was young where a group of friends that I thought I was you know very close with basically rejected me which I always thought was the, the the pinnacle of rejection it's one thing being rejected by somebody you're trying to romantically seduce everyone's got choice everyone's got preferences not choice everyone's got preferences everyone's got things that they like or don't like and sometimes you just might not be their taste or their cup of tea it's okay it happens you keep it moving but when somebody says I don't want to be your friend like categorically you I don't want to spend any free time talking to you about any reality tv show about sports about video games nah you are a bad friend not even though you're a bad friend I don't want you as a friend you are useless to me as a friend that is when it hurts and I remember that happened to me when I was really young and I think that really stung me to the point where I'm really um sensitive when I see other people get shafted by their friends it kind of brings up some dormant emotional turmoil in me as well so I guess when I saw Crystal Leo being abandoned by everybody in the LA comedy scene even though they all used him for views and they were all boasting on their, sh on their shows about how much of a monster he was and a beast and a beast the moment he got accused of what he's accused of everyone kind of threw their hands up in the air I don't know him I don't know what I'm doing you know what I mean the Whitney Cummings of this world all these kind of people they just completely abandoned him and I thought it was really disgusting but the one person that really grounded my gears when this cancellation thing happened and he kind of abandoned him was Brian Callum but we're going to talk about that later but this clip is what made me kind of get into this mode about making this really weird ranty video where basically Chris basically lays his heart bare and talks about why his son has been such an important factor in him being able to get back on stage and heal from all the um, turmoil that he went through right because in the eyes of some of these LA comedy people when they get cancelled it's not about the victims really it's mostly about them funny but hey look, we'll talk about it another time but yeah this, this is Chris talking about how he how his son has brought him back to life and he also thanks some people but conveniently leaves out a single name I'm going to mention later having my son there in that green room 
Having my son there, knowing that he was watching his dad do his job for him too, you know? It was the reason why I went back on stage. It's because of him. I didn't, you know, I checked out. I was in a bad fucking place, man. I did not want to, you know, there were weeks and months at a time where I didn't, I was like, fuck it, dude. So many people threw me under, under the bus. Fuck them. I'm not doing stand up anymore. That's Brian not a community. Tenet. I'm not in that community. I don't want to be in that Whitney community. Whitney Cummings. Fuck that. I don't want to be in that community. Joe you know, Rogan, to an extent. The world has a certain a, 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 really. opinion of, of, of me or whoever the fuck has an opinion of me or whoever the fuck it is. You don't know who I am. There was a long time where I just wanted to give up. The only thing that made me get back on stage at certain points was my son's going to be 20 one day or 15, whatever the fuck it is, of a mind to ask me, oh, hey, dad, you used to be a comedian. And I would have to say, yeah. And he would say, well, why don't you do that anymore? I'd have to say a version of, I let the world get the best of me, or I let people say and believe that I'm something that I'm not. And I gave up. And when it comes to my son, that's just not an option. That's what that means to me, having him there. And that's what that means to me, having him there with all the people that I love and still love. Uh, whether that be, you know, Brendan Schaub, Theo, Craig Conant, Chappelle Lacey, Eric Griffin, you know, and I'm just naming some of them. But, you know, and my fiance and Calvin, who, uh, who knows me? Well, 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 no mention there of bloody Brian Callen, eh? No mention there of Brian bloody Callen. And it's no surprise too. It's no surprise that you'd mention Brendan and not mention Brian. Because again, we all have a lot of things to say about Brendan Shaw. He's a lot of things. Douchebag, bully, lucky, uh, fortunate, CTE ridden, whatever, right? Hardworking, I'll give him that. Definitely hardworking in that extent. Social climber, clout chaser, a lot of things you can call the guy. But one thing you can't call him is disloyal. If he knows you have value to him, if he knows you are a clout token he can add to his roster of tokens that he can pull out at any time to guarantee he gets views and money in his bank account, he's going to hold on to you but i'm also fairly certain that he really adores chris whenever you see brendan trying to get chris's attention on the fight companion he looks at him with puppy dog eyes he looks at chris how he used to look at brian when they first started you remember when t5k first started when we used to all be fans i was a fan of t5k i was one of the biggest fans of the show i was gutted i couldn't go to their live shows i was gutted i couldn't go when they filmed the flipping um not when they filmed when they were doing their fighting the kid live and brendan first got his first start doing stand-up and he had to come up and do a little five minute you know that little story right i was gutted i couldn't go to those sort of things in the beginning brendan used to look at brian with puppy dog eyes like wow man this guy is showing me the way he's showing me another route out where i don't have to get punched in the face for a living you know over time as brendan is he became more successful he probably saw the missteps of brian along the way too because brian let's not be no it's okay it twisted he's a brilliant stand-up comedian but he's made so many glaring errors in his career over the years and mostly the the number one area i think he's made again from afar for somebody that doesn't know i still think he's a world class stand-up comedian but an average actor but for whatever reason he feels like he's a world-class no he, he wants to be a world-class actor but you know his real talent is in stand-up but he's never really pursued stand-up seriously than when he did acting the only reason why he's doing stand-up now is because acting is dried up because you know you got accused of uh, do you know what I mean so you can't necessarily do acting in Hollywood because that's not gonna happen he doesn't want to go and work for flipping Ben Shapiro and his dog shit production thing you know what I mean what's happened with that movie with him and Gina Carano has that even come out but Brendan was the one person that stuck by Chris he stuck by him he defended him quite openly Yes, he cried and did that annoying crying thing. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about crying. Let's play that clip again. You have to uh, at least talk about this. Um, you guys, if you follow <laughs> the news, if you're alive. Sorry, last time I, first and last time I stopped this, this video can never get old. This room belongs in the hall of fame of podcasting lull moments right this has to be there and now you know when i say podcast low moments i mean across the board i mean across the entire board this has to be one of the low moments it has to be this is epic this is this is box office tv brian sat there in his glasses trying to hide the bruising from his flipping eyelid surgery that he got in an effort to prolong his hollywood career not knowing that his hollywood career was ending soon you know the whole joke that chris Leah does like with the glasses like my future's too bright he couldn't see his future it was too blind to it mate he was too blind to it. And then Brendan sat there in his in his um make believe specialized thick boy bike merch. By the way, where's the bike? What happened to the bike? Is the bike gone? Is he still riding it? Like, I, I, I just can't get around it, man. I just can't get around it. And they're both there crying because their friend at the time 
got accused of being a kiddie diddler. What world are we living in here? Where they're crying and sobbing that their friend might be a kiddie diddler. Now, of course, the when they, when the story came out, we found out that you know it wasn't what it what it was, and maybe he's maybe fond of younger girls. Doesn't necessarily mean he's a kiddie diddler, but definitely he is. But you know what I mean. But it was just hilarious to see this reaction from these guys. <laughs> Anyway, let's play it. Last time I stopped this, I promise. Uh, if you've been following this Twitter thing the way we have, uh, you know what's going on with our friend Chris. I'm not, you know, that when these situations, people in Hollywood tell you what to say. And, um, I, 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 and I said to Brennan, what we can do is tell the truth. And I'm not going to sit here. I'm a man and I define myself on how I respond to these situations in real time when the pressure's really on. Yeah. And so this is what I'll say. Um, I always knew Chris is a ladies man. I have never, and I'm going to say this, I have never seen or heard of him doing anything illegal, ever. Um, this is as shocking to me as I'm watching this happen. I don't know what to think, and I don't know what to say. I don't. Um, but I have, I'm going to say it again, I have personally never heard or seen him do anything illegal. That's all I can say, and right now I have to believe that, because he's still a friend. And, and, and it may be unpopular to say that, but I... I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be some, uh, I, I, I just think it's an impossible situation. And uh, I'm, I'm just at a loss. I'm at a loss. And I'm praying, I'm praying that um, what I'm hearing isn't true. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I can't talk. It's just, you know, it's like, talk. it's a weird thing because I said to, to Brendan, I said, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's like watching someone die or something. What? And also, it's I just, just I, you know, I have, I we haven't. Just, what's important is that we haven't spoken to Chris. No, and I'm we've shark. never been. We've never been on the road with him. I, you never. know, I was on the road with him um, about 14 years ago once um, when he was, uh, you know, just beginning. But I've never been on the road with him, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think, and I don't know. And that's what's so frustrating. It's. I'm just sad. Yeah. I'm sad. I don't. So anyway, yeah. Sometimes that's the best thing to say. Is to say I don't know what to say, and I'm just um, I don't know, man. It's a it's it's a fucked up thing. I can't talk. Fuck. Well, that's appropriate. That's appropriate right now. You can just you can just pray that. Uh... <clears throat> you know what's funny? I'm always gonna remember those Travis Scotts two seven whatever they are, right? From this video, that's the memory I have of them. I might start calling them Brendan Shorbs. The Travis Scott, Brendan Shorbs. These, honestly, I remember these shoes because of this episode. <laughs> so obviously that was a terrible, terrible way to address his allegations. Personally, in my opinion, I thought they should have just gone for the Joe Rogan approach. Joe Rogan has basically pretended like Brian Callen and Chris Leo don't exist anymore, despite them being real big permanent fixture of the comedy store he's yet to really respond or to comment on the allegations at all now it probably makes a lot of sense because at the time you could imagine he was probably going through his negotiations with spotify the money he's getting from spotify is you know life-changing generational changing money he's rich already but when you get 100 million you're essentially looking after five seven six generations of your family to come if you're smart with it so it's no surprise that he was minding his business keeping his head down and not getting involved that's what they should have done they should just kept their mouth shut and, and and just not said anything but when you come out and try and distance yourself like we were friends but not friends we hung out but not hang out i saw i didn't see ladies man but didn't nothing bad if i'm in front of me it's like it just raises more questions than than answers so you're better off just like keeping it stum, keeping it quiet going joe rogan style not commenting on anything and hoping that your friend gets cleared of the allegations or better yet you know what you could do instead of running to record a show to go and basically to basically excuse yourself and prevent anyone from blaming you you could maybe go and call your friend if that's your actual friend you could should call them and maybe say hey i know you're going through a tough time now let me come over let me be with you because i don't want you to do anything crazy you know what i mean just to be there in that kind of tense tender moment where they feel like everyone's abandoned because for sure in hollywood everyone abandons you at the same time your agent calls you to break up with you this person emails you to say they're no longer in business you get replaced in a flipping garbage movie by flipping tig bloody nataro everything's falling of course you're gonna be you're gonna be at the lowest you've ever been the one thing you do need is your friends to come by your side and show you that they're actually your friends. Not to get in front of a camera and start fake crying or to start talking about how they didn't know, don't know you behind their flipping plastic surgery sunglasses. Bloody hell. And then of course, of course, the fans called him out about that behavior because it's disgusting. And this is how he defended himself. Oh, he's great. He's like a cop. He's a pure comedian. Yeah, I don't know. I, the thing is, I, I got, I'm so old that I would, I would come, I'd come in and out. 
Yeah, that's how you do. That's like with Delia. Like people thought I, I hung out with Chris all the time on, on the outside of. I never hung out with Chris once. Yeah, I had dinner with Chris exactly one time at Swingers at eleven at night. But I never, I never spent time socially with Chris. You know. I or anybody. Just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I just too old. Think. Absolutely disgusting. I never hung out with him. Are you sure, mate? Are you sure? Now, I know this does exist some, in some cases, right, where celebrities or known figures, they get into a relationship that's advantageous because it sells well on camera. And it might happen in their field too, where you want to give this idea that you're in a buddy cop movie together. You're kind of filming a real life action. You're, you're basically trying to film like a documentary style version of the entourage. I understand. But let's not deny, we've all been fans of these guys from the 10 minute podcast all the way until their current iterations of what they are now. We know these guys are friend. Yeah, you don't spend all that time recording podcasts in somebody's bedroom that no one's going to listen to when you're not friends, especially when back then when they were young and they were kind of starting up on a 10 minute podcast. That's not something that you do with somebody that's not your friend or because you want to get famous. You do that because of the love of the game. You want to make each other laugh. You want to talk about something you saw in the news. You want to maybe bust some balls. That's why you recall those shows. And then you obviously, of course, along the way, you both become rich and successful. Amazing. That's the dream. Everyone would love to be successful and rich with their friends, apart from me, because I don't have any friends. But you get what I mean. So to say that you're not friends is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the irony of it was he did all that distancing and he still got cancelled himself. He didn't even have any remorse. Callan didn't even have any remorse. When everyone came out and, and accused him of the R word, he didn't have an explanation for, again, maybe it's a legal thing, but there was no explanation. There was, remember that, that story in the flipping um, Los Angeles Times? Big up Amy Kaufman, right? The absolute terminator of the LA comedy scene. She single-handedly brought down that entire LA comedy scene on her own with a Flick of the wrist, flick of the wrist. She brought down the whole scene. Do you remember that article? It was detailed, mate. There were many, I think there were like four accounts of women saying, saying things that you could kind of hear Callan allegedly saying if it did happen. He offered up no explanation, no counter argument, no remorse. He even went as far as trying to sue the husband of one of the accusers because they were calling comedy stores or comedy clubs, whatever, around LA and trying to get his shows canceled or maybe around the country, I'm not really too sure. And because they were, you know, limiting his ability to go on the road and be a road dog, he sued. He was trying to sue the flipping husband. Imagine the lack of self-awareness and the lack of reading the room to go and sue the husband of your alleged, you know, our word victim. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my bloody God. But again, the hypocrisy continues because when I saw these videos, again, it just brought up ugh, all these latent, latent feelings. And here he goes again, Mr. Callan, trying to defend whatever is indefensible in terms of his act. This podcast, and this is for all you fucking guys out there who, um, I think I said I'd only hung out with Chris once and went out to dinner once or something like that. Let me clear this up right now. Chris is my friend. I've always been in touch with Chris through all this whole time that he's had his ordeal. And when I say I didn't hang out with Chris, I'm saying I didn't hang out with him because the times I saw him were at the comedy store. Our relationship was comedy store. And uh, and when we were- It's work, right? It was, I, it was always work. Uh, the truth is when you're way older than somebody, you don't go to lunch or dinner fucking ever the times i saw him when i wasn't at the comedy store was never saw him on the road never saw him on the road the times i saw him were at swingers four or five times maybe when he would go after shows at 11 o'clock and i would go have some pancakes no i didn't i didn't need pancakes you okay enough of that bullshit now let's cut him some slack maybe technically they weren't hangout friends like we thought they were but they were still close now does that need to be said what he just said there it doesn't need to be said you're only saying it for self-preservation's sake you're not saying it to clarify your relationship for the sake of the fans so they don't get the no you're saying it to protect your own back and to bury your friend that's why people are going after you in that in that respect and that's why probably in the aftermath of everything that's happened that's probably why Callan's fucking um, reputation has suffered the most out of everybody because everyone got to see him as the spineless whatever you know snaky guy that he is and then of course karma came and visited like a ton of bloody bricks falling off a building site and said kaboom here you go but come on, man, semantic games. And if you're saying, no, Agostino, you're wrong. They weren't actually friends. They were actually only, you know, hung out to the comedy store and all that stuff. If you're thinking that, let me just play this video and and, and, and let me know what you think after you watch this video. And this is what I get from Crystal Lee on a Monday. Hey, bro. I got a question for you, dude. Do you have a, a number uh, for a good back doctor? So I'm getting scoliosis because uh, my knot's too thick, you know what I mean? When I fucking sit on my wallet, my knot is too thick. Uh, I tried getting 
uh, smaller, uh, l larger bills rather. Larger like bills. Uh, I tried doing hundreds instead of twenties and fives and shit, right. so my knot would get fucking thinned out. But I think I need them to start making thousand dollar bills, and they're not going to do that anytime soon. So also, I would put my wallet in the front uh, pocket. Here it comes. Like say do that. Here it comes. But uh, my cock is eating up too much fucking real estate there, so I'm in a bind, man. I was just wondering if you knew a, a good number for a back doctor, I and you I probably don't need do, this. man, because you're fucking. 80. Just a couple of 30 year old plus men having a bit of fun. But let's scoot on through the video and see this lack of friendship. This lack of camaraderie. Is it camaraderie or is it camaraderie? Someone let me know in the comments. Camaraderie? Camaraderie. Tomato? Tomate? Let me know in the comments. I haven't even had my coffee yet and I get this from Crystalia on my phone. So I'm going to use it as an advertisement for my upcoming shows in Minneapolis this weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. Kevin, June what's up, my man? Dude, night. I was looking at my Instagram. I just noticed I surpassed a million followers. That's crazy, right? So anyway, Minneapolis this weekend, a House of Comedy. Matter, but, uh, Next weekend, was, uh, June 7th, 8th, and 9th, you're, uh, somebody tell Raleigh, North some Carolina. Shit on your page. Good nights. And I noticed so you got about... right? And let's scoop your head again. When it comes to me. Yeah, fine. That's them hanging out of <laughs> Wait. Yeah, I'm that. More banter on the Bro. show. Yo, is Brendan allergic to all the moisturizer? Huh? God damn, my G. Some more comedy. Oh, look at that. Just a couple of buddies hanging out after the show. I'm glad he got rid of that little Tintin thing, though. That was horrendous, isn't it? That little Tintin quiff he had was fucking shocking. Glad he got rid of that. But anyway, that was what you needed to know in terms of proof that, hey, maybe they were closer than what he was making it out to be. So yeah, just to end. So I hope I demonstrated why it would be pretty obvious or pretty clear why Crystalia would thank Brendan before he thanked Brian, despite him knowing Brian far longer than what he's known Brendan and Brendan and his relationship being mostly transactional in the beginning or clout based and then maybe developing into a closer kinship brian and chris actually started off as actual friends peers coming up together going to the comedy store recording a 10 minute podcast pursuing a holiday pursuing a hollywood career but somewhere along the line the relationship maybe drifted apart somewhat we don't know we don't know who really cares i'm no psychiatrist i'm no psychologist but from the looks of it it makes sense why he would have brendan at the front of his mind and not brian callan because of him throwing him under the bus repeatedly and then of course getting cancelled himself maybe unfair considering what we've known so far but still at the time you need to stand by your friends and have some level of honor have some level of loyalty to the people that you've come up with you would think but again it's hollywood it's hollywood la la land all roads go out the window but i want to end this on a good note and i want to big up one person who i think has been there in brian's corner even though he doesn't want him to be there and clearly in the beginning it felt like he was doing it as a chore and he felt like he was beneath him let's big up sam tripoli sam tripoli despite what everyone says about him on the internet i don't care about his personal life i don't care about what people say about his twitches and stuff i don't give a fuck i think the guy's quite funny his conspiracy theory stuff is loopy but again without eddie bravo being on the scene it's quite nice to have a really wacky guy go deep into conspiracy theories and be really passionate about it we need that energy on the internet especially that la comedy scene they all take themselves too seriously they need a couple of eddie bravos and a couple of sam tripoli's to shake up a little bit so they don't get too sanctimonious and whatnot sam tripoli stood up for brian callan defended him quite vigorously in the beginning so he defended Crystalia too who hasn't really appeared next to him which is you know says a lot maybe about him as well in that respect but he came out and he went hard in the paint defending both of those guys when most people were trying their best to distance themselves from them too but Sam's Tripoli stuck by Brian Callan stuck by him to the extent where he did this show on Patreon together with him it got to a point where I think Patreon kicked them off because of the conspiracy theories they were able to well maybe he did and maybe he found that new platform Rafkin Rifkin whatever they're on and I think last time I checked I saw someone post a stat or something on the homeless cats page where allegedly they were making thousands a month on this bloody platform for people subscribing five dollars a month for them to you know record a show where they basically go back and forth about conspiracies and you know stuff that they've maybe you know done in a week whatever it's just a podcast but it's pretty clear that sam tripley has a lot of love for brian callan even to the point where he's the one person in his friendship group that actually remembered it was his bloody birthday it's a tiny gesture it's not much but he remembered it was his birthday and he did the following day to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear Callen. happy birthday to 
This you. is fucking amazing, dude. Look at that. And of course, only Brian Callen could turn up to his own podcast on his birthday late in flipping sandals only he could do this but still what a sweet gesture and that is where i want to end it ladies and gentlemen sometimes in life you don't get the friends that you'd want you get the friends that you'd need at that point in time and sometimes like relationships you can look over the other side and think i wish he or she was my friend because they're cooler because they drive a faster car because their wife or girlfriend is hotter because they have better relationships or networks with people or connections with people in the hollywood industry that i want to get near and exploit for my own own gains but sometimes you get a friend that's so loyal to you that can't offer you anything else but friendship and love and that's the person you should actually stick next to i would hope if sam triple again god forbid touch my skateboard touch wood he doesn't get involved in anything nonsense any 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 madness happens to him but i would hope if some madness happens to sam Tripoli, that brian callum won't throw him under the bus the same way he did crystalia i would hope that be the case and i'd hope that we've all taken a lesson from this is that we should maybe value the friends that actually stay near us that actually stay next to us that stay connected that check in that actually appreciate our company that don't make it seem like a chore to be around us that don't diminish us demean us put us down over speak interrupt everything we have to say i hope we look at those friends and say you know what you might be a bit of a whack job you might do me in with your flipping conspiracy talk you might get on my last nerve sometimes but i know you are my actual real friend because there's not many of them out there there really isn't many friends out there and when you do find one you find a friend for life this is the agostino zingo show hope you've had fun i hope you've enjoyed it if you have give me some love let me know what you think in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions peace